All right, welcome to Japan. And in today's video, I wanna give you guys a three month ownership review of the Sony a6700. I've owned this camera for about three months now and I've used it on some professional jobs, but I've mainly been using this for YouTube and just travel photography. And I think over my ownership, I've taken some incredible photos that I'm super proud of that will be going into my portfolio. It's a great video camera, but I want to talk to you guys why I'm actually switching back to my Sony a7 IVs, which are full frame cameras. So midway through my trip here in Japan, and I thought I might would just bring you guys along for the tail end of the trip and give you my long term ownership review of the Sony a6700. So let's just jump right into it. No, it's not hard. I like this background, but it might be a little bit too backlit. Oh, here's a nice backlight. Yeah, that's excellent. It's actually really nice. Though. Yeah. Do you want to um, stand about here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. Do you mind sitting on this? Like in the dry part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. We'll let like a dryer, like the runner go. Yeah, it's cool. And then bring, yeah, like that. And then maybe a little bit wider? Yeah. Ah, sick. Yeah, I love that. The first thing I want to talk about is image quality, and this is something that impressed me the most. Coming from the Sony a6700, it is a massive upgrade with the new 26 megapixel APS-C sensor. They've updated the color science, and now they actually match with the Sony a7 IV a lot better, and I can't really tell the difference between the two. Unless I really crop into the image, you can just see that the a7 IV being a full frame camera just has more sharpness and overall resolution. And that's a point that I actually explained wrong when I compared this camera against the Sony a7 IV. And 26 megapixels is 26 megapixels, whether that's an APS-C, medium format, or even a micro four thirds. But the larger the sensor, the more detail you get when you zoom into the image or you print an image. So the Sony a6700 and even the FX30 have a fantastic image quality for photo and video. And that's definitely not the reason why I'm switching back to my full frame Sony a7 IV. All right, we are in Tokyo. We got this 35 millimeter f1.8. Bought myself the best coffee in Japan. It's only about a dollar. Yo, that's so dope. How long do you reckon I have to wait for everyone to leave and just have one single person going up those stairs? I'm just gonna shoot it with that guy. I think that actually worked. So the reason why I actually bought the Sony a6700 is for making YouTube videos and having a travel photography camera that also has great video capabilities. And while I've been here in Japan, I've been really loving this camera sling from Bowroy. This isn't sponsored by any means, but they did send it to me. But I can house a 23 millimeter, a 16 millimeter, and my 56 millimeter, all from Sigma with the wide open aperture of f1.4. So this has been giving me a very versatile setup of a 24, 35, and an 85, and it's just been perfect for travel. I have used this in a professional setting for a wedding, but only as a C camera, so a really backup of a backup. And the reason why I'm not gonna use this in a professional setting for weddings or commercial jobs is because it only has one SD card slot, and that's a big no for me because I do like having a dual backup on the day. For video, it only has a small HDMI, which is pretty flimsy, and I do like using an external monitor for my video work. And I already own two A7 IVs and FX30s, so I just don't see the point of using my A6700 over my professional videography and photography cameras.
Alright, obviously we're not in Japan anymore, we're back home in the Gold Coast of Australia. And before we get into the conclusions of the Sony a6700, I'd like to ask you guys if you do like this video, make sure you hit that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure you guys subscribe. I personally think the best features of this a6700 is the new video features. You can record 4K up to 120 frames per second. You get that 10 bit S log free that really does grade nicely. Having the LUTs built into the camera to display on the LCD screen is a massive win for myself. I actually made and do sell my own S log free LUTs that you can import into these cameras. They really did a fantastic job with the build of the a6700, especially with this flip out LCD screen, the addition of the front dial, the mode switch between photo, video and SNQ, and for a very small, lightweight, compact camera, the grip on this is actually pretty fantastic with the front grip and also this little thumb grip here. Now for a big topic and probably my most asked question with the a6700 and that is overheating. And the answer is no, I have had no overheating while using this camera and I've shot this at weddings for 30 to 45 minutes in about 30 degree heat here in the Gold Coast of Australia in 4K 25 frames per second S log free the highest bit rate in full direct sun and I had no overheating issues. If you are having issues with the a6700 a couple of tips one of them is to set the internal temperature too high that's for all Sony cameras and I mentioned that in my Sony camera guide which is linked down below. Another one that a lot of people make the mistake is just simply flipping out the screen this will dissipate a lot more heat because this part right here is the one that gets the hottest. When I'm recording in direct sunlight and it's a really hot day and I am a little bit concerned about it I just open all of these side doors right here and just by doing that you're going to allow a little bit more breeze to go through the SD card and also also opening up the battery door will just exhaust some of that heat out of the battery. So the main reason why I'm actually going to be switching back to shooting on my Sony a7 IVs is because of the compact full frame lens options that you have for Sony E-mount. There's a great range of the APS-C lineup with third parties like what Viltrox and Sigma have made, but I have found that the APS-C lens quality does drop. Now they're super sharp, they have great contrast, but I just find they flare a little bit too much and the autofocus does miss a little bit more compared to full frame lenses. And for the Sony system, there's just not any compact F1.8 or F2 lenses like Fujifilm have that do not compromise in any quality. Like when I was in Japan, I picked up this super compact 40mm that's a Sony lens and it's f2.5 and this lens is razor sharp, it's super compact and I just love this lens. Sigma have a 24mm f2 version that has the exact same depth of field and field of view as the Sigma 16mm f1.4 APS-C lens. That 24mm f2 is lighter, it's smaller and compact, it's a little bit more expensive but the image quality is a full frame lens and I think the pros and cons outweighing using this setup right here. In next week's video, I'll be reviewing the Sigma 23mm f1.4 that I bought about two months ago and I use that lens a lot in Japan. That's a fantastic lens. It's kind of expensive, so if you want to see that video, make sure you subscribe. If you did like this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you don't like the video, hit that like button twice. Again, thank you to Mitch and our models Ali and Amine. You guys are fantastic. Their link's in the description down below. Remember, my Instagram is also down there and we'll see you next time.